audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Exploring faith and the future. Neil Johnson and Bible teacher, Dr. Camille Majdali. Amazing how if we understand where we've come from, why we believe the things we do today. And as we're looking at Europe, having looked at the Reformation and things that began to cool the embers of what was happening with the heat of the Reformation and missionary movement around the world, we were talking about the Enlightenment, Camille. Now, there were positives and there were negatives from the Enlightenment. Let's start with some of the positive things. Reminds me of that classic question, I have good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? (laughs) And oftentimes people choose the good news first, which is totally different. But anyway, you want the good news first, Neil. So one of the positives has to do with the founding of the United States of America. Now, please put aside or ignore the fact I have an American accent. I've lived in Australia longer than the U.S., but I, I believe in giving credit to where credit is due. Uh, firm, fervently so. The United States, obviously far from perfect, and especially now, and there's reasons for that, but in its classic time, especially with these founding fathers who not only were highly intelligent, but some of them were solidly Christian. Not all. Thomas Jefferson is a good example of not solidly Christian. Christianized, but not Christian. I think possibly the same could be sent to Benjamin Franklin. But they came up with a very, very fascinating experiment in human liberty and governance that, for example, it's not the crown, but it's the people that derive the source of authority, that in order to have a more perfect union, you recognize people are made in the image of God, they are destined for freedom. However, they also knew their theology. There's sin in the human heart, there's corruption, there's greed. So you've got to do this balancing act between honoring people as autonomous agents who deserve freedom and that freedom actually comes from God, but don't let their freedom go riot and therefore endanger the welfare of others. So therefore the U.S. Constitution put both into place. It had the checks and balances and the separation of power so that nobody had absolute power, so nobody could abuse their power, so that would be a protection. But at the same time, it sought to maximize individual liberty, freedom, like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and these things. How successful was this experiment is that probably, how can we put it? There was a time that America was the only functioning democracy, and then after the Second World War, I, the statistic, and I'm doing this from memory, was only like 20 democracies. And now today, in our world, we have like 120 democracies. So this whole idea of constitutional government and separation of powers and democracy, obviously it caught on very well. Faith and the Future with Neil Johnson and Dr. Camille Majdali from Teach All Nations. Find articles, videos and podcasts from Dr. Camille plus today's and other episodes of Faith in the Future in the Vision app or at vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.